Hello, my dear student. Uh, in standard 11th, we reached to the lecture number 11. Okay, that is lecture number 11. And we were studying the vector analysis. Okay, my dear student. Uh, in a vector analysis, we have reached to certain points. We have discussed the resultant if this is the triangle and the two vectors are inclined at an angle theta. If the vector A and this is the vector B. All right, and this is the angle theta. Okay, then the resultant we obtain here are, sorry, a square, b square, plus twice a b cos theta. All right, my dear student. Yes. Using parallelogram law, if you will draw this one, you will see this two vector like this way. This one, you can add this vector from here. The result is not going to be changed. This will be the resultant. Here also, this will be the resultant. You can see both the resultant are uh, same. Whether you are using parallelogram law or the triangle law, the result is not going to be changed. It remains same. Okay, so this R vector, which is A plus B, A plus B, so its magnitude, that is the magnitude of R, that is the magnitude of A plus B is a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta that we have studied. Okay, my dear student? Yes. If any vector is in form a plus b, then we got this one. We have also studied the angle between this resultant, that is the alpha. That is the resultant makes the angle alpha. And it was tan alpha it is b sine theta over a plus b cos theta. This was the direction. All right. Direction of resultant. We have discussed till here. Remember student, if any vector is added like r is a plus b. All right. A plus B then you are having the result in this one a square plus B square plus 2 a B let me write again a square plus B square plus twice a B cos theta where theta is the angle between these two vector all right but if you are having any resultant it is a minus B then what will happen the resultant will be a square plus b square minus 2ab remember cosine angle again theta is the angle between vector a and vector b remember don't confuse we have studied till here i'm repeating okay again and again all the things might be the similar thing because this is very important, my dear students. Remember, you are studying the vector and this is very, very, very important for your standard 11th and 10th, 12th. This is not a topic, a chapter, actually. This is the helping element. This will be uh, used as an instrument, like the mathematics you use as instrument for uh, physics. Uh, the same way, this vector you will use as an instrument, okay? This will simplify your physics. This is the language of physics, actually. All right, my dear student. Uh, one more thing. Suppose if we are having a vector r as xi plus yj, we have discussed already. Again, I'm recalling. And if you represent over this axis y and x, all right. So the magnitude, actually try to see this vector over this axis. This is x, i and this is y, j. 
and the resultant looks like this one. All of my dear students, and this is the angle. Uh, suppose no, it is alpha. This alpha is the angle between resultant and vector x. And here the angle between vector x and y it is how much? 90 degree. All right. So you write the magnitude of this vector r as mod of r as root under x square plus y square and tan alpha you write y by x that is the angle of resultant with the x-axis and you use tan beta as x by y that is the angle beta is, uh, beta is the angle of resultant or the direction of resultant with which axis with y axis in very detail we have discussed okay my dear student now here if the resultant is in this way xi minus yj so the magnitude will be root under x square plus minus y whole square it remains same magnitude remains same x square plus y square now again try to look over the axis y and x let me draw x and y this is the x and this is the y this is the x-axis all right now the resultant looks like this one whether the angle will be positive no this is negative now you can find here directly the tan alpha what I told you you have to find the direction with the x-axis so you will write x below as denominator now y by x but you can see the coefficient on j it is minus y here minus y you have to write the coefficient of j divided by the coefficient of i remember to find the angle with x-axis if you want to find the angle with uh, y-axis then you have to write the coefficient of i divided by coefficient of j here the coefficient of j is minus y that's why okay and this alpha is negative why we are going here the clockwise the clockwise angle you have studied in standard 10 the clockwise angle always measure as negative all right so this is negative and this is positive there will be number of question my dear student that's why i'm just enabling you to understand all the things one more thing my dear students i forgot to teach you in uh, uh, unit vector try to remember the magnitude of in note point in your notebook you will write the magnitude of any unit vector okay this must be one all right what does it mean? If you will put this I cap inside the modulus, you will find one. The magnitude of any unit vector actually, any unit vector, whatever, maybe the unit vector, A cap, I cap, J cap, whatever. So the magnitude is one. Why? Because we know that the one vector will have only one magnitude and only one direction. One magnitude, one magnitude, but the value of magnitude can be anything. But the direction is only one okay that's why here the magnitude is one so okay now let me wrap this we'll discuss a few more thing okay now the next suppose my dear student uh, you are having a vector hold it uh, what uh, one more thing my dear students i would like to request you all if you find any mistakes Okay, in my lecture, kindly notify in comment section. You can use that comment section so that uh, I can rectify. Okay, further, further. Otherwise, the very student will uh, uh, study the that wrong thing. Okay, but I'll rectify in the comment section only. Now, we are going to uh, do some practice what we have studied till now. Okay, suppose the two forces are acting. Okay, the two forces are acting at a particular mass at a particular point, and we have to find the magnitude of resultant as well the direction also. All right. So here I'm going to give you some forces. We have to find out the magnitude and direction of the resultant. Okay. So here we go for the first example. On the x and y axis, this is the very important. Here, uh, the one force it is acting parallel to the x-axis. 
suppose suppose this is the force f all right and another it is also the force identical all right yes interesting and both are acting at uh, 60 degree all right it is acting at 60 degree and it is asked to find the magnitude and direction of the resultant of course if two forces are acting at this point if this mass is free then this mass will not move along this force or this force it will move towards along the resultant of this two forces all right so we have to find the resultant magnitude how much force is acting resultant force is acting you cannot say the 2 2f is acting over here so we have to find the resultant magnitude and also what will be the direction of that resultant force okay my dear student so here i am going to uh, let me set the board a little bit you might feel problem due to this focus all right here the resultant my dear student we know using uh, you can solve this uh, question by the two method okay one it is the component method and the second that uh, you can use that formula first that formula resultant we know that resultant force this is the force and which force it is the resultant force this resultant force can be written the a square plus b square okay at the place of a we are having one force and at the place of b we are having the another force and both are same in magnitude so it is the f square plus f square plus twice f square cos 60 am i right yes cos 60 it is 1 by 2 remember it is 1 by 2 so we can put here f square and it will be the 2 f square what is f square f square 2 f square plus this is 2f square times 1 by 2 it will be the cancel out so we'll have the resultant force it is root 3f f square will be out of the root with the f all right and this is the answer but how you will find the direction you cannot find the direction using this one all right so we are going to solve this by the second method remember wherever you uh, are asked to find magnitude only directly you will use this formula remember all right now the second one the second method my dear students can we write actually both are the vectors so we are going to write here the two vector the sum of the two vector all right this vector already we are having on over the x-axis so we can write f i cap but this vector is not over the x-axis either on x-axis or y-axis so let me break the component of this force okay the component of this force can be written as this force will have the component here it is f cos 60 am i right yes f cos 60 one component and another component will be on this axis it is f sine 60 f sine 60 now we're having the total forces you can see it is f sine 60 f sine 60 and the two forces here okay one it is f and second it is f cos 60 now this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis now we can write the resultant force here the f resultant as in vector form my dear student it is f plus f cos 60 that is the f by 2 i cap plus f sine 60 it is f root 3 by 2 along the y-axis it is z cap now simplify this is 3 by 2 f i cap plus f root 3 by 2 j cap and this is the resultant force now you can see we have just formulated we have just converted this particular this force over the x and y axis here the coefficient of i is 3 by 2 f coefficient of j is f root 3 by 2 and we know that these two are perpendicular to each other you can see this force and this force are perpendicular to each other it's very clear and if two force are perpendicular to each other then we know the formula of magnitude what we know actually mod of f r my dear student it can be written as root under okay suppose this is the overall f x 
so we can write f x square plus if it is f y then f y square now it is very simple root under it is 9 by 4 f square plus this is 3 f square by 4 now you will find the same answer what we have root 3 f from here also this 2 okay the 4 actually LCM so the 9 3 is 12 by 4 f square root under and this is the f resultant so the f resultant it is root 3 f. so we got the same answer but this was very easy sir what is the benefit of this one actually what we have done actually here my dear student the benefit of this one you can find the direction of force easily using this one and sometime you need to know this one also how to find the direction okay otherwise you will be confused i will teach you the number of way to find the direction but this one is the also one of the important method now how will find the direction sir remember the resultant of these two forces will be somewhere here all right f r but with respect to the x-axis, we have to find the direction. Suppose it is the angle theta. All right. We have to find the tan theta. So tan theta, we know that we have studied that to find the direction of one vector with respect to the x-axis, we will keep if tan theta we are going to find with the x-axis, we'll keep the coefficient of i. That is the coefficient of x as denominator now where is our vector our vector is over here you can see this is our vector the coefficient which is over the x-axis is 3 by 2f 3 by 2f and the coefficient with j it is f by 2 root 3 root 3 by 2f all right f will be cancel out 2 will be cancel out so finally we have the root 3 by 3 and it is 1 by root 3 so the tan theta here tan theta it is 1 by root 3 is mean theta is how much it is 30 degree answer so this is nothing but the 30 degree so resultant is inclined at 30 degree in this way you study how to find the resultant okay my dear student yes be careful while you have to find the uh, direction of magnitude also okay so i'm rubbing this one and i'm giving you a homework Remember my dear students, you will ask for this assignment. I'll give you assignment. I'm not giving the homework over here. I'll give you the assignment. There will be a number of questions, 80 to 90 questions will be there for the for your practice. Okay. So you'll ask for the assignment, my dear student. Here. Okay, let me give one question. Here the one force, it is F and the another force it is mm, suppose this one okay this is the f and this angle is 30 degree you have to find the resultant magnitude of resultant force f r and theta the direction of resultant force okay this is x axis and this is y axis if the question will be in statement the question will be written the two forces the two forces are acting at an angle so that one force makes 30 degree with the y axis and another it is along the negative of x axis find the resultant force and also find the direction of resultant force with x axis okay my dear student so this is your homework now the next next example this is also very important. Uh, kindly uh, write down the question, my dear student. I'm dictating the question. Two forces, 8 Newton and 5 Newton. Okay. Two forces, 8 Newton and 5 Newton are acting. Okay. Two forces, 8 Newton and 5 Newton acting. What, full stop, what will be minimum and maximum resultant? This is a question. What will be the minimum and maximum resultant? okay if you can solve try to solve now let me give the answer 
if one force is 8 newton and another force is 5 newton okay so the maximum force will be when we will add in same direction that we have studied so the f max it will be 13 newton not more than that very clear and minimum force will get at which angle we have studied the different cases if the two vectors will be inclined at theta equals to 0 degree 90 degree 180 degree we got the maximum resultant when theta is 0 and we got the maximum minimum resultant when theta is 180 degree all right so 180 degree it means this vector will flip like this way okay it means the minimum will be 8 minus 5 it is 3 newton this is the answer okay now the next example my dear student at what angle kindly note down the question at what angle two forces again 8 newton and 5 newton okay at what angle the two forces 8 newton and 5 newton are inclined are inclined to have the angle sorry at at what angle to have resultant as 10 newton you need to find the resultant as 10 newton what should be the angle could you solve my dear student yes if you can solve this is your homework try to solve the very simple my dear student the very simple question now another example okay at what angle two vector incline to have resultant magnitude of same as either vector this is the very important let me solve this question you are having two vectors suppose one vector a and another vector is also a the two identical at what angle two identical vector incline this two identical vector are inclined okay at what angle you have to find the theta this is the example you have to find theta at what angle this two vector are identical vector are inclined so that the resultant of this two will be same as the okay resultant will be same as the magnitude of either one you have to find the angle okay how you will solve try to solve pause the video my dear student and try to solve this question okay let me solve this question here the resultant can be written at the a square plus b square plus twice a b cosine of angle all right but if the resultant is a a square plus a square plus twice a square cosine angle a square both side you will find a square as 2a square plus 2a square cos theta here the a square minus a square will be 2a square cosine of angle all right so the cos theta it will be minus 1 by 2 it will be cancelled out minus 1 by 2 and theta is theta is 1 20 degree because cos 120 is minus 1 by 2 so the angle is 120 degree this is the answer my dear student okay now the next question i'm giving you class 4 uh, at what angle at what angle this is also your homework okay this is the homework at what angle the two forces 8 newton okay f1 8 newton and f2 5 newton are inclined at what angle these two forces are inclined to get the resultant force of 1 newton okay 2 newton at which angle you will incline these two forces if the resultant force is 2 newton okay my dear students this is your homework you must solve this question and you will send in group now next question
today we are doing practice over the theory that we have studied till now find angle between vector a and b we have to find the angle between a and b you have to find the angle if magnitude of vector a plus b is equals to the magnitude of vector a minus b okay this is a question how you will solve this one a very simple i think you will find the magnitude of this two so the root under a square plus b square plus twice a b cos theta is equals to root under a square plus b square minus 2 ab cos theta am i right yes here minus we are using because it is minus all right we have a study right now for the a plus b it is plus theta a minus b it is minus theta a squaring both side you will find this a square b square cancel out all right and then it is 4 a b cos theta it is 0 then cos theta is 0 it means theta is how much 90 degree it means the angle between a and b is 90 degree how let me here the angle between this vector a and b it is it is how much it is 90 degree you can see this particular thing by making okay my dear students by making the diagram suppose this is the x and y axis okay uh, for the first one a plus b okay for first one a plus b suppose the two vectors a plus b are inclined in such a way i think uh, i have not uh, taught you the position vector it would be a little bit dif uh, difficult to understand you okay uh, i'll teach you after the position vector okay now other another example try to solve uh, write down the question my dear student if resultant of two identical forces two identical suppose f1 is f and the f2 is also f the two identical forces all right like this one if resultant of two identical forces is root three times is root three times root three times the resultant of uh, sorry the root three times the magnitude of either force root three f okay then find angle between two forces you have to find the angle between f1 and f2 you have to find the theta could you solve if you can solve pause the video and try to solve Here. Now look at here. We are having the formula FR, it is F1 square plus F2 square plus 2 F1 F2 cosine angle. Since the resultant is root 3F. And the forces are identical so the f square plus it will be the here the 2f square f square plus f square and it is the 2f square cosine angle squaring both sides you will find the 3f square minus f minus 2f square all right this will be toward this side 2f square it is 2f square cos theta hit we have the f square it is 2f square cos theta cancel out that is 1 by 2 1 by 2 it is cos theta so theta will be 60 degree that's a very simple if the two identical forces are inclined at 60 degree the resultant will be root 3 times f okay my dear student uh, we have studied here 
few question how to solve but the number of question you will find in my assignment i hope that you will ask for the assignment and in next class we will study how to find the unit vector okay how to find the unit vector i'll give you uh, some uh, questions to find the unit vector okay so this is all about today's lecture my dear students thank you very much